أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم Today, today we are reading the 21st word of Sayyid Nursi, the first station. We talked about it last week. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, for such prayers are enjoined on believers at stated times. One time a man, great in age, physic, and rank said to me, the prayers are fine, but to perform them every single day, Five times a lot, since they never end, it becomes weary. So there is a man who says, the, the prayers are good, yeah, but five times a day, it's too much. A long time after the man said these words, I listened to my soul, Said Nusi is listening to his own soul, and I heard it say exactly the same things. And I looked at it and saw that with the ear of laziness it was receiving the same lesson from Shaitan, from Zatan. Then I understood that those words were a soul said in the name of an evil, commanding souls, or else they had been prompted. So I too said, since my soul compends to evil, one who does not reform his own soul cannot reform others. In which case, I shall begin with my own soul. Now, we all together will try and begin with our souls now. We will try to reform our own soul. I said, oh so, listen to five warnings in response to those words which you uttered in compounded ignorance. On the couch of idleness, in the sleep of heedlessness. Catch of idleness. First voyage. Oh, my wretched soul, is your life eternal, I wonder? Are you living forever? No. Have you any incontrovertible documents showing that you will live, live to next year or even to tomorrow? Will you leave this building? Do you know that? You can die in a second. Do you have a document? No, you have. Nobody. Nobody has a document which says that we will live next year in five minutes. No one of us. What causes you bottom is that you fancy you shall live forever. You think that you will live forever. And then you say, when I pray five times a day, and I'm living 100 years. Oh my God! How much have I to pray? You complain and so you will remain in the world for pleasure eternally. If you had understood that your life is brief, it's short, like a dream. You know, last night, when you slept in your bed, you dreamed. And you dreamed only 8 seconds. The longest dream goes 10 seconds. But if you wake up, you think that you dreamed 8 hours. But that's not the truth. The reality is, you dreamed only 8 seconds. The same is with our life. We think we will live forever. 100 years. You will not live 100 years. You will live 5 seconds. And then you wake up and you say, What the hell? Where am I? Is it over? I was living in my hometown. Frankfurt, New York, California, Miami, Hong Kong. And now I'm here. It was just, just 5 seconds of my life. And it's over now. One more time. If you had understood that your life is brief and that it's departing fruitlessly to spend one hour out of the 24 on a fine, agreeable, easy and merciful act of service was the means to the truth happiness of eternal life. Surely does not cause boredom. 
but excites the real eagerness and agreeable pleasure. Think about it. Who do I have give you 24 hours? You have 24 hours every day. And your creature who loves you more than you ever can love yourself says, hey, you know what? I gave you 24 hours. Give me one of that bed and I give you the paradise. One hour to win the paradise? Come on. You're walking eight hours a day just to buy yourself a car that costs 20,000 euros or dollars. You, you're walking eight hours like, like a donkey, but on the other hand, you have to walk only one hour. You have to give your creature one hour back to win the paradise. What an offer. What? It's unbelievable. Give him one hour back and you win the paradise. You win the paradise on earth and you win the paradise on the afterworld. Both. You can have both with one power. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. But our ego says no. No way. Let's read the second warning. All my stomach worshipping soul, every day you eat bread, drink water. Do they cause your bottom? You're eating, you're, you're eating every day. Every day. They do not because since the need is repeated, it is not bottom. You need it. But pleasure, they say here. In which case, the five daily prayers should not cause your bottom. For they attract the sustenance, water of life, water of life, and air of your friends in the house of my body, my heart, spirit, and subtle faculties. Indeed, the sustenance and strength of a heart which is afflicted with infinite grief and sorrows and captivated by infinite pleasures and hopes may be obtained by knocking through supplication on the door of the all compassionate and merchant. Here I am, O oh my creature, the munificent, all compassionate. Here I am. I came with my prayers on my back. Please accept me. Please, please accept me. Did you ever hear that that the creature says, you're eating every day, it's over now, you can't eat every day. Did you ever hear it? No, no one of us, ever, ever. Because the creature is Rahman, he's Rahim, he never said that. But we are saying that when we spoke about this prayer. We say, every day, no, come on. And the water of life, of a spirit connected with most beings which swiftly depart from the transitory world crying out of separation may be invited by turning towards the spring of mercy and eternal love through the five daily prayer. And the conscious innocence and luminous subtle faculty which by its nature desires eternal life and was created for eternity and is a mirror of the pre-eternal and post-eternal one and is infinitely delicate and subtle is surely most nearly for air in the sorrowful, crushing, destroying, transit, dark and suffocating conditions of this world and can only breathe through the window of the prayers. When we are hungry, we're going to eat. Is that correct? Okay. When we need water, we're going to drink it. That's correct. Okay. Because we need it. 